I'm not repairing phones for a full-time job, but just to get a little extra cash on the side. I was 15. Summer just started, so I had tons of time to feed my hobby. After browsing eBay for a few days, I found a few interesting listings. I know it might sound cliche that I'm using eBay, but don't get me wrong, you can get some unbelievable deals on the site. I had previously won 13 iPhone 6s with restore errors for $560. Sure enough, after cleaning the internals, 9 of them restored and worked flawlessly. Enough about that. Let's get to what happened. I had bid on and won 4 different eBay listings. One for 8 original iPhones, which I won for $35. 4 iPhone 3Gs, which I won for $15. A few iPhone 4s and one 4S for $45, and 19 mixed condition iPhone 5s, 5Cs, and 5Ss for $117. I paid and they all got shipped out within a few days. Pleased with my orders, I showed my friends. After about 1-2 to two weeks, I had gotten all the packages, me and my parents picked them up at the post office when they all arrived. It took me a bit to test all the phones. But let me tell you, eBay had gotten me a great deal again. The iPhone 4s, 3Gs, and original iPhones powered on. Most worked flawlessly, but some had a cracked screen or even as minor as a broken ringer switch. However, the iPhone 5s and 5Ss were a nightmare. On the first night, the closest thing I had to working devices were cracked LCDs, iCloud locks, and iTunes restore errors. Even some of them didn't include the main boards, also called the motherboard, inside the phone. I already had some cracked but not completely broken screens and a few used batteries from previous repairs. I figured that having a cracked screen on a phone would be better than having no screen for testing purposes. I went to work, installing the screens and replacing the batteries. It is a lot easier than you may think. All you really need is a few screwdrivers and know that square connectors go into square holes and triangular connectors go into triangular holes. Just with a simple screen swap or battery swap, six of the phones sprung back to life. Two of the iPhone 5Cs got a little warm after charging, but I still figured someone would buy them. The other five had major issues, mostly hardware damage and some were even iCloud locked. I really didn't mind that 5 phones may be irreparable, excluding the completely gutted iPhones that is, as 6 of the iPhone 5S's and 5C's would be worth more than triple the price I had originally paid for them. By the second night, the working ones were listed on eBay, and I would look on to seeing if the ones with hardware damage would be fixable. This is when I cleaned the hardware damaged ones with rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush, as this would remove any rust caused by water damage. Two out of the three hardware damaged iPhones were able to work after clicking the update tab in iTunes. The first phone had not been restored. It would go to the home screen, but it had an iCloud account on it. I emailed the original owner, as you can view their email address in settings, if they could remove their account. I would just be waiting for a response. In the meantime, I noticed that the speaker was not working, so I replaced the waterlogged speaker with a fresh one from one of the activation locked iPhones. The second one was powering on, but with some extreme issues. It would only boot up like one third of the time and it would get really warm when booting, plus the ringer switch wouldn't work. I didn't really care. Just the fact that it was booting without an iCloud account was good. Sure enough, I put that up on eBay for a cool $60 for an actual phone repair to fix. After all, I'm just doing this to get a little extra cash. After a few more days, some of the iPhones I put up sold, as I had them for under $120. After browsing for a bit longer, I got that familiar email notification. Out of instinct, I checked to see what I had received. A message from the owner of the iPhone 5C. He asked where I got the phone from. I said I bought it off Craigslist and got scammed. He said he was sorry for what happened to me, but it was his phone, so he would want money via PayPal to unlock it. Thinking and considering I had squeezed myself out of these sort of situations before, I said that the phone had not been reset, meaning his info would still be on the phone, and it was still able to be sent to him. 
and I could send him the info for him to unlock it. If not, I would need to sell it to get my money back. He replied soon after saying, it has not been reset. I replied yes, and I would gladly send him the information after he unlocked it. But he then said the words I was not expecting to hear. I see you live on my address in Canada. I'm coming. I almost had a panic attack. He was coming to my house? How did he get my address? His phone was off. I stupidly replied to him, saying that I would want money for me to give the phone back, or my other offer was still open. He then replied about 30 minutes later, saying, I'm close. I did the only thing that I thought was logical at the time. I hid all my stuff I had laying out on my bed, locked my room's door, and hid in the basement. Did I think that this guy would come to my house? No. But I'm still not taking any chances, because this guy knew my address. In the basement, I had the guy's phone. I turned it on, as it really didn't matter at this point, and I was looking through all of his apps. However, I then heard something from outside. It kind of sounded like a car pulling up in the driveway. I was home alone at the time, and I knew mom and dad wouldn't be home till tomorrow night. This was when I started to get extremely paranoid. But then I heard the beep beep of the alarm system we had. It does this whenever anyone enters the house. But unfortunately for me, I hadn't armed the alarm part. And I think I left a door unlocked. At this point, I couldn't even move. I couldn't even speak. That expression, frozen in fear, is not an expression. I was literally frozen in fear at that moment. It only took a few minutes for the silence to be broken. I heard some very loud bangs come from upstairs, nearly making me shriek in terror. After a few of these bangs, a loud slam was heard. I then realized what it was. My bedroom's door lock was one of those cheap locks where you can lock it from the inside and outside, so it really wouldn't have taken that much force to break it. After was the most unsettling silence I have ever been put through. Just sitting there and knowing that a person with harmful intentions is in your house is the scariest way to spend a Friday night. After a few minutes, the silence was broken by a very loud noise coming from my pocket. I already knew what that was. With Find My iPhone, you can send a ping to a device if you cannot find it. I immediately throw the pinging iPhone at the basement staircase before running to a different part of the basement and hiding. After a few seconds, I started to hear the loud clunk of the staircase steps. That person definitely heard that ping and was coming down. I stood as still as I could and started breathing really slow, cause if I made any loud noise, I would most likely be as good as dead. After whoever had gotten down to the last step, I could kind of see them from the light by the staircase. He looked young from what I could tell, probably 20s to 30s male. He was wearing mostly black and appeared to have some sort of long object in his hand. He picked up the phone where it had landed. He appeared to get pissed off when picking it up. He probably would have thought that I broke it as I put a cracked screen on the phone. He walked around for a little bit and got pretty close to where I was hiding before he then went back upstairs and I heard the beep beep come from the alarm. After about 20 minutes, I slowly made my way back upstairs, cautious not to make any noise. I would have called 911 downstairs, but I was in such a rush earlier, I didn't even check if I had my phone on me. I got upstairs and arrived at my room. Sure enough, the door was broken down, and all of the electronics that I had not sold on eBay were lying everywhere. Most of the iPhones and iPods were missing, 
But luckily, my personal iPhone that had fallen out of my pocket onto my computer chair had not been touched. I grabbed it and called 911, and after, I called my parents. After about 20 minutes, the officers, and not long after my parents, arrived. Let's just say that I had some explaining to do. I told the officers and my parents what happened, but my parents were so thankful that I was not harmed that they didn't even punish me. Fast forwarding a little bit, insurance was collected and I was able to restart my hobby. I'm very thankful that the guy didn't find me in the basement as I have no idea what would have happened if he did. I even have been able to acquire more iPhones after a ton of convincing with my parents, but now I check the serial number before turning them on to make sure that iCloud is disabled. But the story doesn't end here. After about two months since the incident happened, I was adding some newly purchased iPhone 4s to my iCloud account. When I checked Find My iPhone to ensure that all the devices were successfully added, I saw something that made me literally yell, Oh wow! I remembered that on every device that I sell, I log in with my iCloud ID to prevent people from opening an unpaid item case through eBay and get a free iPhone as this method actually has saved me a few times in the past. I was too preoccupied for being thankful that I didn't die that I didn't even think to log on to find my iPhone. I saw most of the devices that were stolen from me and most of them were in one house and it was like 20 minutes away. I didn't even hesitate to put all the devices in lost mode and then take tons of screenshots of the place that it was in. I then rushed to my parents saying that I found the guy's location. We then went to the police station and reported the address along with handing in the photos of the satellite view that I had taken from earlier. After a few days of waiting, we finally got a call from the police. This call made me feel relieved, but also very panicked as I didn't realize how much danger I was actually in. Most of the stolen property had been recovered excluding some of the stuff that he had already sold, but he was on charges for assault, murder, and other accounts of theft as well. Ironically, some of the evidence for the charges that was put on him was on that very phone that was in my possession. I believe that's why he was trying to get the phone back so badly after I said that I didn't reset it. Thank the Lord that I never clicked on the Photos app as I would have been in for a surprise. In the end, I got most of my iPhones back and this son of a got caught. If there's anything that you should take away from this story so that this doesn't happen to you, is that if you're gonna ever buy a device from eBay, Craigslist, or any other online dealership, you should consider how dangerous it can actually be. Because you never consider that the previous owner of your device is a thief or a murderer. Just please, 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 always make sure that Find My iPhone is disabled before you even connect the device to the internet, as you really don't know who's behind that iCloud account.